London, England, south of France And all points between they know about your man Konnichiwa ladies when I'm out in Japan I'm a Tokyo giant like Ichiro I am all around the world Welcome to another edition of the Lifestyle Design Confessions Podcast We're here to help inspire you to go for it And live the lifestyle design of your dreams Here's Rob Welcome to another edition of the Lifestyle Design Confessions Podcast. I'm Rob Murgatroyd with GetJetSetMoney.com. And today we have a super exciting guest. His name is Gary Arntz. And he was voted by Time Magazine as one of the 25 best blogs of 2010. This is Time Magazine, the real deal. Since March of 2007, Gary's been traveling around the globe visiting more than 70 countries and territories. And on March 13th, 2007, he handed over the keys to his house. He put his possessions in storage and headed out to travel around the world with nothing but a backpack, a laptop, and a camera. Three and a half years and 70 countries later, he's gotten the equivalent of a PhD in general knowledge about people, places and this thing we call planet earth without further ado gary are you there yeah i'm here okay so gary just by way of background could you tell us what led up to the decision of traveling around the world in other words what kind of work were you doing before this and what was the trigger that led to this all happening i had a uh, a very early internet consulting firm i had started uh, a company online back before even netscape was released so this was, you know, in the Mozilla days. And one of my college roommates designed a product called Cold Fusion, which is now owned by Adobe, which was designed to hook up a database to a website easily without having to do any Perl scripting. So what my firm did was, what today is really kind of pretty standard is uh, web application development using a database. So what today you would use with PHP or even like WordPress at the time, everybody was just doing static web pages. So we were developing applications, uh, systems for newspapers and publishing houses. And I sold that, that company in 1998. And one of the things the company I sold it to, uh, which had offices around the world, was to send me to all their various offices to talk about the internet. And so I got to go around the world for the first time. And it was really my first trip out, out of the United States, other than Canada. And I really enjoyed the experience. And uh, after that, I started a couple other companies, uh, one of which I sold again, another I was just an investor in, and I was looking for something to do with my life. There were no businesses I really wanted to invest in, so I decided to travel. When we hear about selling companies, you know, some people sell companies into the millions and millions of dollars, and other, and other people don't. So, you know, just to kind of give things a proper perspective, this wasn't, you know, something for you where you were like, you know, Mark Zuckerberg selling Facebook, was it? No, it wasn't that much, but it was enough where I, you know, I could live quite comfortably. Okay. So take me back to the moment when you said, that's it, I'm out of here. What what were you feeling emotionally what was going on in your head when you were you know kind of playing with this idea and in that moment you went okay that's it I'm gonna do this what was that like it all really happened in an instant um, I had gone to like I said I took a trip around the world I had done some other trips since then I went to Iceland in 2005 I did a uh, I went with a, a scientific group to Argentina to do a project and, you know, I enjoyed doing it all the time. And it was, you know, kind of one of these moments, like, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, I'm going to travel. And once I made that decision, and it all kind of happened in an instant, it was just a matter of how to make it happen at that point. And it took about two years, maybe a year and a half to unwind everything, to sell my house, to take care of all my affairs. And is this sort of within your personality when you make a decision, you do it big? Or is this, you know, sort of unique to how you do things? No, this is pretty much how I do it. I mean, even when I decided to uh, to start a blog, I was like, I mean, I I had I'd been blogging before blogs were called blogs. I had a personal website. And about nine months into my trip, having run... Uh, one of the companies I started after I sold my firm was a, a gaming company. And uh, our network was doing about 50 million page views a month to, to give you an idea of the, the size of it. So I knew what good traffic was. 
and I was not doing good traffic. I would have maybe a hundred people a day visit my blog. That'd be a good day. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I was going to do this seriously, I had to take it seriously as a, as a job or I needed to stop doing it. And that was about nine months in and I was in Hong Kong at the time. And, um, since then I, I've sort of changed my approach and yeah, it was sort of go big or go home. What was your biggest fear when you started this? What were you, you know, what was the one, you know, uh, thing that you had to wrestle to the ground in your head before you actually said, okay, that's it. I'm selling the house. I'm unwinding everything and I'm out of here. What was the, what was the biggest linchpin for you? This, this probably will come as a surprise or maybe people won't believe it, but there really wasn't. I mean, once I made up my mind, that was it. Uh, I wasn't married. I didn't have any kids. I didn't have, have any relationship stuff to worry about. I didn't have to worry financially how I was going to pay for it. Uh, I had enough money saved away. A lot of people, when I tell them what I do, they say, oh, you're so brave or they use courage a lot. And I never think of it in those terms. It was just something I did. And I understand that for most people, it might not be like that. But for me, it was just um, once I made up my mind, I did it. What do you tell people when you, when you bump into them? Like, wh where are you right now? I know we've got a, a bit of a spotty connection. So when people when people are listening, you know, obviously he's traveling around the world. The Internet isn't always great. But where are you at this moment? I'm one block away from Waikiki Beach in Honolulu. Okay. And where were you, say, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, I would have been in uh, Curacao or Aruba. Okay. <laughs> so when you bump into somebody and, you know, you're having a, a chat with them over maybe a cup of coffee and they ask you, you know, are you in Hawaii on business or are you, you here on pleasure? What do you tell them? I say, uh, well, actually, I'm in Hawaii right now to work. Uh, I'm not here to, I, I'm so backed up on, on photos and articles I wanted to write, but I just say, I've been traveling around the world for four years. Um, and that starts off a whole line of questioning, like, Oh, do it. That's amazing. And, and I get that, I get that almost every day. Mm -hmm. So I have a business card and I thought, you know, what should I put up on the business card blogger, you know, what, because that always starts a conversation because people like traveler, what's that? You can't, you, know, you can't have, be a traveler as a career. And, um, starting that conversation is what I always enjoy. <laughs> I bet you do. The look on you must you must see these looks that run anywhere between you know jealousy, excitement, or everything in between. Now you're not doing this um, with somebody else. You're doing it alone, and I'm sure that you get asked this question a lot. But was was that design where you said I just want to do this by myself? I want to ex experience the world alone because I'm sure that it's a much different experience doing it alone than it is perhaps you know with someone else. Uh, I actually asked one of my friends to come with me and I offered to pay her entire way and uh, she didn't want to do it. So, which to give you an idea, there are a lot of people that want to do something like this, but when it comes time to pull the trigger, you know, their fears and doubts kind of get in the way mm -hmm. from either I do this alone or I don't do it at all. So doing it alone, and doing it alone it is. <laughs> How has uh, packing changed for you? In other words, have you added or deleted certain things that you thought were important and now they're just not? Or do you have more stuff? Do you have less stuff? Or what's different? Uh, like I took, a, I took a bag of like, you know, bandages and ointments and all these other things you'd think you need. And I realized you can get that stuff anywhere. If you get to buy medicine on the road, you don't need to carry that stuff, that stuff with you. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of uh, shoes I carry and clothing has probably gone down. The amount of electronics I carry has probably gone up. Um, that's weight easily the biggest I carry. So is electronics. Yeah, sure. What has been your biggest expense traveling around the world, and how have you reduced those costs? Well, there are only three real. Ex well, maybe four, but you you have transportation costs, you have lodging. And then you have food. And then I suppose you also have, you know, miscellaneous going out for drinks.